Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you how to carry out a deductive data analysis. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Let us begin. Deductive data analysis is required if you are doing an explanatory study or maybe you're looking at the explanatory part in a confirmatory study or an experimental study. It requires you to choose a theory that best um, explains a phenomenon. So this will help to understand a phenomenon or the effect of an intervention. There are six steps of deductive data analysis. Step one, you need to decide a theory. Now, this is a bit different if you are doing inductive data analysis where you start with the data. In deductive data analysis, you start with a theory. Step two, you need to familiarize yourself with the theory. So you need to look at the literature on the theory in order to identify the main themes of the theory. Step three, you need to identify the keywords or the codes of all the themes in the theory. In order to do that, you need to, again, as I said, um, similar to step two, look through all the literature about the theory. Step four, you need to identify the codes from the data. That is, after you've got all the data, you have, this, you have transcribed the data, then you go through the data and do what we call coding. Step five, you need to categorize the codes based on the themes. That is, after you've done all the coding, you need to do that. And step six, look through all the codes and the themes and you start writing your story. Here is an example of deductive data analysis. In this research, the research objective is to understand how the writing of weekly e-learning journals can help students to improve their self-regulated learning, or in short, we call them SRL. So step one, I need to choose a SIO theory. So in this case here, I've chosen SIO theory by Pintrich 2004. Step two, I need to look at this literature and understand the themes um, in SIO theories. For example, here, motivational beliefs, resource management, effort regulations, and etc. Step three, I need to identify the keywords in all these themes. Step four, coding. After I've got all the data, I need to run through all the data and identify the codes and do my coding. Step five, after I've got all the codes, I need to categorize them according to the themes. This is an example of coding and categorization. I'll run through all the data that is on your left, left side and I find the codes. I put the codes that in, and after that, after I've done all the coding, I will uh, categorize them based on the different themes. In this case, here, resource management, effort management, and so on and so forth. So, in this case, for example, the first one, uh, time management. Time management, based on the literature, is under resource management. And um, the, theme, the, the, the code, work hard or work harder, that's under effort management. And um, the other one is asking help from lecturers or friends that is under effort management, help seeking under effort management. And the third one, which is very interesting, I found out, um, this respondents here um, mentioned putting away my phone. So um, handphone is a resource, but in this case, apparently it is a distraction. Now, SRL back in 2004, based on the theory, um, handphone was not very popular. So this is a new findings that I have that can actually add to the knowledge of SRL in the area of resource management um, pert pertaining to management of handphone. Step six, write the story. So you have to look at all the, uh, the codes under each theme and summarize them and uh, create your own story. Um, it, it's always a good practice um, when you're writing the findings part of qualitative uh, study with some direct quotes, uh, quotes um, from the data itself that will provide more understanding and um, insights to your story. 
Well, that's the six steps of deductive uh, data analysis. I hope you find this short video uh, useful and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.